Hey everybody and welcome to another ActionFeatures.net Toy Talk Review. If you watched our recently posted unboxing Domino Marvel Legends video, you'll know that we're going to be doing a lot more of just the couch type reviews to cut down on the time it takes to do these. But we still want to do some full-blown reviews. Me especially, I would like to do all of the Diamond Select Ghostbusters because it's one of my favorite current lines. I like to go back and do all the Series 1 through 5 figures that we missed out on with the rooftop diorama pieces. And then moving forward, say, Series 6 through 10, with the Firehouse wall pieces. Uh, so today, we're taking a look at one of those. We're going to be looking at this geared-up Lewis Tully. Um, I want to say real quick, though, when we go back and do the rooftop ones, there's a good chance I won't be able to show you the separate piece for each of the characters, because I've already built my rooftop, and I don't want to take it apart. But for these Firehouse versions, obviously I haven't built anything yet, because they're not all out. So I should be able to show you each piece as we go along. For this series, this is Series 6 of the overall Ghostbusters line. It's the first wave of the Ghostbusters 2 figures. It included Warback, Ray Stance, Vigo the Carpathian, and then this Lewis Tully. And all three of these were available both at specialty shops in this larger Diamond Select style packaging with included Firehouse diorama piece, or at Toys R Us with a bare bones version, no Firehouse piece, just the figure, accessories, and a stand. Obviously, this version is the Firehouse diorama version, though. I don't have the single carded version from Toys R Us to show you. So just look up a picture online if you really need to know. Uh, the packaging here is the same style we've seen in all Diamond Select releases, basically, where it's a large bubble with a lot of area there, um, a rundown along the side as to what license it is or what character it is. It's, it's pretty uniform packaging that carries across all the different lines. We've got a little Select 15th Anniversary logo down here, Ghostbusters 2 logo running up the side. Instead of a picture of the actual actor and the character from the movie, as Series 1 through 5 had, though, we've now got a picture of the figure itself. Ghostbusters 2 logo down below. The whole packaging carries a green motif. We've got this yellow and black, uh, almost like a hazard tape down here. That's kind of like the top of the trap. Run along the bottom. The back of the package, as I've already shown you, shows the other three figures in this line. We've got the collect all 15 figures to build the firehouse. We've got that all built there. Another Ghostbusters 2 logo up here. And then we've got a brief rundown about the figure, which I will read to you now. A tax lawyer by trade, Lewis Tully was at the center of the 1984 Gozer incursion. It was briefly possessed by Gozer's minion, assuming the form of a terror dog until freed by the Ghostbusters. Tully owed a debt to the group and, and agreed to represent them in a case brought against them by the city of New York and helped get their license reinstated. Well, that's a long sentence. After assisting around the office in legal capacity, Tully was driven to gear up after hearing that his friends had become trapped by a malevolent spirit. Spirit? Malevolent spirit, James. Come on. This seven-inch scale action figure is based on the 1989 feature film Ghostbusters 2 and features multiple points of articulation. It also includes accessories and a piece of a larger diorama. Collect all 15 figures in series 6 through 10 to build the front of the Ghostbusters firehouse, sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. Now we already know what the rest of the series is are. Series 7 is going to is already out. It came out very quickly after this one. This has only been out a couple months, but the next wave came out very fast after that, within like a month or two. And that included Warback Egon, uh, a slime blower Winston, and Janos po Poha, the guy that works the museum and helps Vigo. Uh, series 8 will be Weirback Peter, Warback Winston, and slime blower Ray with an interchangeable possessed head. Series 9 it begins the real Ghostbusters, and that includes, I believe it's Winston Egon Slimer to begin with, and then Series 10 is Peter Ray Stay Puffed. And then that will complete your firehouse diorama. All right, does that cover everything on the packaging and everything? Okay, cool. Well, let's get him out of there and we'll talk about the figure. Okay, we got Lewis out of the box now. Let's uh, take a look at him. We'll look at his accessories first. Then we'll move on to the articulation, size comparisons, that kind of stuff. Before we go over to the couch and give our final thoughts on the figure. Now, Lewis comes packaged with flesh tone hands on him right now. He does include a total of eight hands, including the two he has on when he comes in the packaging. To me, though, it's more accurate to have the gloved hands on Lewis. So mine has got the gloved hands on already. Um, he does come with two sets of ungloved hands. There is these tighter gripping ones where the articulation point moves up and down. So when you have it on his wrist, this goes up and down like this. And then the other ones are more of a relaxed grip and those move in and out. So the articulation point makes it so the hands go like this. Now those, these hand molds, I believe are unique to Lewis. I don't think these have been used before. They look smaller than the other Buster hands, and they also don't have sculpted fingernails. And these same molds are used on the other two hands that he gets. 
he gets a set of tight gripped gloved hands and then relaxed grip gloved hands. And each one of the hands comes with this cuff piece, which if you have any other previous figures, you'll know that when you pop these off, these little wrist pieces come off and then you can do the ungloved look or you can have these cuff pieces on there to, sh to show the lower piece of the glove. Um, and that articulation point is the same on those, it's the same mold. The tighter grip go up and down and the looser grip go in and out. Now for mine, I have a tighter grip on the left hand and a looser grip on the right hand on the Neutrona wand uh, because that is the way Lewis held it. He held it left-handed in the movie. Um, whereas all the, usually it's the, they're holding the, the trigger area on the right hand and the barrel with the left hand, he had his backwards. So that's why I have mine like this, in case you're wondering. That's why it's also looking kind of weird where the hose comes around. But anyway, uh, so that's what you get. You get a total of four gloved hands and four flesh tone hands, two pairs of each, basically. Uh, and they're very easy to switch out. You just yank the hand down, take off the little glove piece if you're wanting to switch out, and then pop the other one back in. If it feels kind of tight, maybe dip it in some warm water first just to make sure you're not going to break that peg off. And as you put them in, they have these little tiny ridges on the stem. Just make sure you're kind of feeling them click all the way in. I believe there's like three ridges. So you should feel it click in like three times. The other standard accessories he comes with are a walkie-talkie, which slips right under the belt. There's a little holder, just like the other figures had. Then we've got a proton wand that plugs right into the proton gun, or neutrino wand, however you want to say it. It's got this little tiny uh, cleared out space here. So you'll have to make sure you, when you plug it on to here, that you're matching that up with the end of the barrel. So that way you're not breaking it off. These are a little bit, a little bit fragile, so you want to be careful if you're taking this off and putting it on a lot to make sure you don't break the little tiny piece that connects the proton stream into this little clear clip. Uh, the last accessory that he comes with as far as action figure accessories go are, is this ghost trap. Um, it does not open, I don't believe at least, yeah, it does not open. It's the same trap mold we've seen before. It plugs onto the belt piece here. There's a little square back here and there's an empty recess in the back of the trap and it just plugs in like that and you'll have to kind of drape the, um, it's not going to look good right now because I'm behind the camera, but you can kind of work the cable around the foot pedal and make it look so that it's a little nicer than what I'm doing right there. I've got him on this NECA stand right now just because I don't want him falling over during the review. He usually stands fine on his own, but sometimes I'm doing a review, I'm jostling the table a lot and he fall, uh, stuff will fall over, so that's why he's on this NECA stand. He does not include the stand, so don't think he does. Okay, uh, the last piece I want to show you that he comes with is the Firehouse Diorama piece, since that's the version I got, and it is the Firehouse door, and I'll back this up just a little bit so you can see the size of the door. So you can see it's pretty big to begin with, and it does open up so that you can have Lewis get confused as to how the door works like the end of the movie. Um, it's got a nice... It's got a nice paintwork to it. It looks like almost like painted wood. It's got this like kind of patterning to it. And then we've got a little golden lock area and a gold doorknob. The back is not detailed because you're not going to see that. It's going to be just the front of the firehouse. So there's your firehouse piece. Okay, as far as our articulation goes, are we too far back? Let's zoom in a little bit again. There we go. Get Lewis off this stand. Just like all the other Ghostbuster, actual Ghostbuster figures, I'm going to move my strings on my jersey here so I'm not draping them in front of the camera. There we go. Uh, just like the actual Ghostbuster figures, He's got the same articulation as they do. Um, it's a really nice wide range of movement, where, and the joints still have nice tightness to them because it's ratcheting in, inside a lot of them. Uh, okay, so here was what we had. The ankles move up and down. They also are on this like swivel where the peg inserts into the foot so he gets a nice side-to-side -side movement. We've got a double knee joint. And again, that's nice and tight. It's not flopping around or anything. I, I think all the Ghostbuster joints on all my figures have been really nice so far. They have a nice tightness to them to the point where it's not feeling like it's going to be gummy and break inside there, and it'll actually hold some decent posing. Uh, a swivel at the top of the hip, and then he's got these really nice hip joints that all the Ghostbusters have where they swing out, and then they also go up and down. And you hear that, that ratcheting movement, so they can hold nice posing instead of having hips flopping all over the place. Now this joint is also really nicely hidden by the a separate piece of the utility belt. So the belt itself is kind of covering up the hip joint, so you don't really see that it may be not the prettiest joint in the world, but you can't see it anyway. Uh, and then he's got a swivel at the waist, 
He's got a ball jointed torso in the mid section here, right where his rib, rib cage is. Then we've got, Lewis, I'm going to have you let go of your poisson wand there. Uh, he's got shoulders that swivel up and down, then hinge in and out. Same with the elbow, where they hinge up and down and they swivel around, where they insert into the bicep. And the same with the wrists, where they insert, their hands where they insert into the wrist, they swivel there. And then, like I said before, there's two different types of movement on the wrist itself. And then last but not least is the ball jointed head. Now all the gear that Lewis is geared up with here, since he's geared up Lewis, he has the proton pack, which is a separate piece. It's the same proton pack mold we've seen so far. It's a nicely detailed and sculpted version of the proton pack. It actually has all these little individual stickers stuck to it. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stickers stuck to it. Um, now the first wave, I noticed that some of these stickers don't stay on very well like series one through five, sometimes they'll kind of slide off of there and if you're not careful you may lose a sticker or two. But all of his seem like they're really on there really well. That doesn't feel like they're going anywhere. Some of the coloring may be a little bit off here and there on the Proton Pack itself, but as far as a $20 figure goes, $20, $25, this is a really nicely detailed Proton Pack. The Proton Wand goes on there the same as it did for the earlier figures, where it's got this sort of upside down V post sitting here, and then we've got a recessed upside down V on the back of the Neutrona wand, and you just kind of have to work that down onto there until you feel that it's kind of got it and it's a little bit tight. Um, the belt itself is also a separate piece, as I said before, and they've added the lifeguard on here since this is Ghostbusters 2, so it's got this lifeguard piece here. And like I said earlier, the walkie-talkie fits inside there. Uh, the hose on the leg, now the gray suits don't have this, they don't have this leg hose piece, but the tan suits do. And this time around, Diamond has done like a softer, clear plastic, as opposed to the first wave, which had sort of a harder, I'll try to get him to stand without falling here, um, had a harder yellow plastic. Are you going to stand for me, or are you going to fall over? Lewis, there you go. So... Uh, here's a Series 1 figure to compare, and so you can see the difference. This is a much harder material. This is softer and clear. Um, I like this second one better. I think it drapes better and looks better overall. Uh, the coloring may be a little off for Ghostbusters 1. They were more of a yellowish color back in then, uh, back in the first movie, but the overall material was better. Also, uh, since we have him right here, look at the size difference between the two of these. If I can get Lewis to stand up for a second... And he was behaving just fine before I started this review. He was doing plenty of stands for me and wasn't giving me a hard time. Let's get Ray in a standing pose here before I'm sticking next to him. Sorry. Uh, I do want to say also the head sculpt. The Lewis head sculpt is different than the first Lewis head sculpt, obviously, because the first wave Lewis was possessed and this one is not. He has the earmuffs attached to his head. They do not come off. And a pair of glasses that are also attached to his head and do not come off. I mean, I'm sure you could and break that glue or something, but why would you want to do that? That would look silly. When they first showed Lewis, I thought, and I'll get more into this in the couch, I thought he was just going to be the same body with a new head, and I was really disappointed. But as you can see, the height difference is quite noticeable between the regular Ghostbusters figures and Lewis. There may be some parts reuse in here, maybe some upper arms or something, but overall, this body looks pretty unique to Lewis. He does say Spl Spingler on the badge, but that's accurate to the film. Um, the Proton Pack is not removable. I'm sure you could pry it off. These little joints, I've done that on some of the first series versions. Uh, but I don't know why you'd want to. I mean, he looks cooler with the Proton Pack. Okay, uh, so that gives you him and Ray. Uh, oh, paintwork. Uh, the paint overall on mine is very nice. There's not a lot of stray lines. I will say that the Ghostbusters 2 logo looks a little yellowed, which I thought was a little odd. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with all the paintwork. Uh, here he is next to Series 1 Lewis, so you can see the height between those two, which is pretty close, since it's the same character, they're pretty close in size. Uh, the first wave Lewis obviously has the spiky hair, so he's going to have a little bit of height that way. I'm going to do some works and comparison pictures for you, comparing him to like an old Kenner Lewis in his Ghostbuster uniform, maybe him next to Janine, so you can see how the two of those interact with each other. Even though Janine is Wave 1, Janine and Lewis had something going in the second movie, so... Somebody might want to know how they look together. Okay, uh, I think that covers everything on the figure itself. Let's take him over to the couch and finish off the review. Oh, one more thing. Check out the gallery at actionfeatures.net. Right? All right. Cool. Let's go to the couch.
Hey everybody, welcome to ActionFeatures.net Toy Talk Review. I know I've already said that in the opening sequence, so I don't know why I just said it again. Uh, you know what figure we're talking about because you watched the opening sequence. Um, and that is the geared up Lewis Tully from Diamond Select's Ghostbusters Series 6, which is actually Series 1 of the Ghostbusters 2 figures, the Fire Highest Diorama set. Um, yeah. So, That's there it is. There's the packaging. You've seen Diamond Select packaging before. You nice. saw it in the opening sequence. I do like that they have the pa same packaging for everything. Yeah, I yeah. do. You know? It makes, like, if you don't open stuff, it, it kind of all looks, like, I don't know, it fits. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's cool that just, that's all the lines have the same packaging, even though the colors are different, but the same style of packaging across multiple licenses. I think it's really neat. It gives a good picture on the side, too, whereas most is, like, a small picture on the back yeah. or something. Uh, it, it is weird, though, that this Series 2, they do a picture of the figure, and all the Series 1 is the actual picture from the movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Or not Series 1, but Ghostbusters 1 is pictures from the movie. Ghostbusters 2 with pictures of the figures. And that may have to do with likeness rights. Because I know that they were... Uh, we just had Zach Ode on our podcast recently, Action Features. Um, and he explained that there were other plans for Ghostbusters 2 that they were wanting to do. Like uh, ghost characters and other characters that people requested for Ghostbusters 2. Two full waves, six figures. And they couldn't do them because the likeness rights were separate. Mm. So that may have to do something with actual likenesses from Ghostbusters 2 where they couldn't replicate a picture. I don't know. Either way, it's fine. Having a giant picture of the figure or having giant pictures yeah, of the movie. Yeah, I don't mind. I kind of like the picture because it gives you a good look of the thing, like, when yeah. you the stores. And if you had all these sitting on a shelf... Like that, Like, yeah. all ra like lined up, you'd know yeah. exactly what you were Our few looking stores at. do that, too. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, you know, when this figure was first shown, it looked like it was just going to be a Lewis head on a Ghostbuster body. Mm -hmm. And I was super disappointed. Yeah, like, different proportions. Yeah, it's totally different proportions. However... In execution, it is totally different. So let's pull out a Ray figure. And I've already done this comparison in the opening sequence, but just to show it again, because I don't think you guys have seen it yet. Um, like, it's noticeably yeah. smaller. It's, it's, it's like, I don't know if there's any reused parts on him at all. If it is, it's so minimal you can't really spot it. It might be like a knee, upper thigh, something. But they're so different in size. It's it's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy with this figure. Yes. Uh, they've done a lot of stuff different from the older figures, whereas these old figures had the yellow plasticky hose. Oh, wow, I didn't. He's got this clear hose, yeah. which is much softer. Um, and they did have more of a yellow, yellow tint in the first movie and more of a clear in the second movie, but it is nicer. I think that, that hose is much nicer this time around. Um, and they, they eliminated this entirely on the gray suit versions because the gray suits don't have this. Right. They don't have the hose. So they actually changed the mold and got rid of that spot. So he has it, since he's in one of the tan suits. Um, everything else about him is pretty much the same as we've seen on other Ghostbusters. The proton pack's really nicely detailed. Um, the belt's nicely detailed. It's really all about the height. Yeah, that's that, nice. That thing. really looks awesome. And with all the gear being the same size, it looks like bit too big for him, you know, and which is what it should look like from the movie, where he's a small guy and everything looks like it doesn't fit him well and yeah. he's got lots of clunky material on him. And um, it has a Spangler thing on it. Yeah, side. he's got a Spangler. Uh, and a lot of people may not know that when they get the figure. They're like, oh, why does it say Spangler instead of Tully? Because he just used one of Econ's outfits. It's, it's not, not like he, he didn't have his own, own outfit. Yeah, um, It's got the lifeguard on the belt, which is cool. They, add, they had these originally on the Ghostbusters 1 figures mm -hmm. when they first showed them. And people online said, no, 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 no. Lifeguards aren't on the belts in the Ghostbusters 1. And they removed them. So now they're back on these. They put the, the lifeguards back Which on. Which is cool that they actually went back and re-sculpted something. Yeah, that they took that off and then they put it back on. Um, he's got the same walkie-talkie as before. Uh, the hand molds, I, I want to say these are new hands too. Like they're they're smaller than other hands from the line. At least they appear to be to me um, from everything I've seen from Ghostbusters 1. He does have the interchangeable thing with the gloves just like they came up with mm -hmm. for the first ones where it's got the extra pieces. And uh, this time around, they're not just repainted hands. They're actually, Glove there's no mold. fingernails. But his hand molds, they also lack fingernails. Uh, so I think it's just the same molds between both. But, yeah, I mean, you're going to have him with the gloves anyway. For yeah, the part. I'm going to have him with the gloves on. He comes packaged with the gloves off, which is kind of weird. Uh, but it is cool that they included extras, even though when you see him in this outfit, I think you only see him with gloves on. Mm -hmm. I like that they put the earmuffs on him. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. That's really cool. And I will say the lightness, I think, is stronger this time around than the first wave. So we got the first wave Lewis over here and we're looking at both of them. Um, even though I like this one. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Yeah. Um, and maybe the glasses are done a little better than the first wave. They're a little thinner. But overall, I really like that, that likeness. I like the way he's kind of pushing out his lips. 
Yeah, it's a good head sculpt. I like that one a lot. Okay, but I didn't know you had your license. Does that part of the reason to the license thing? Does that part of the reason to do why they couldn't do the cab hat for Slimer? Well, they uh, so they were going to do the cat. You're mentioning something from the podcast. They right. were going to do. He talked about that on the podcast. So okay. I don't know if you heard that. I haven't heard that episode yet. Yeah, they had uh, they had the the hat on the animated Slimer when they first showed it. He had the 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 the, the you know cabbie hat or you know bus driver hat, whatever it was. And the next show, it didn't have the hat on there anymore. Um, and Zach said on the show that he probably will not come with the hat now because of that likeness stuff. Okay. That they can't they, they can't find any instance in the cartoon where he had the hat, so they can't put the hat on because it's specifically from mm -hmm. Ghostbusters 2. Which is probably why we're not getting a Slimer from Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Um, Slimer looks different in Ghostbusters 2 than he does yeah, Ghostbusters it's like 1. different green, isn't it? Yeah, a different, whole different sculpt, whole different mold. Um, different design team that was behind Slimer in the second one. Uh, so yeah, that's probably why there is no Slimer mm -hmm. and there will be no cab hat. Um, man, this is such a cool figure. Yeah, that's, I, I like the Ghostbuster figures a lot, but I haven't bought them. Yeah. That is the first figure that tempted me. I'm gonna get the real Ghostbuster ones, but that's the first oh, one yes. that's tempted me. I yeah. remember us being in Toys R Us and you seeing it, because this is probably the last wave that will be at Toys R Us mm -hmm. since Toys R Us is going under. Right. Um, this will be the last of the single-carded non-diorama piece waves at Toys R Us. So, Lewis... Vigo and Ray that were there will be probably the final ones you'll ever, you'll ever see at a Toys R Us. They, I think that the next wave after that, which was Egon, we're back Egon, um, Slime Blower Winston, and Yanosh, which was then replaced by a translucent terror dog when it was going to go to Toys R Us, those are in production already. So they're gonna, That's my phone, I think. So those are going to go somewhere, hopefully. They're in production. Mm -hmm. They got them card and ready to go. They're just not going to go to Toys R Us. Uh, so, yeah, this will be the last one there. When we, when we saw him there, I remember you saying, oh, man, I kind of want that Lewis. Now that we're reviewing it, I might go back and he's, get one. He's really cool. Yeah. I mean, he's cool just on his own. Yeah, what do you like, think of him? You haven't said I much. I think he's cool. Yeah, he's, I want the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, the cartoon ones that we're all three getting. Uh, this is cool that it's, like, the first time we've seen Lewis in a Ghostbuster suit in figure form ever. Yeah, other than, like, random color ones in the real Ghostbuster line. Yeah, the cartoon ones, they didn't even Ghostbuster suits. But this is Mattel didn't do this, yeah. so uh, maybe a mini mate or something. There, I think there might have been possibly. Yeah. I don't really like mini mates. So I don't really know. Um, yeah, it's my phone. Uh, but this is the first time we've got Lewis in this gear, and the first Lewis we got was more of a possessed Lewis. So this is the first time we're getting Lewis as just being Lewis, mm -hmm. and that's pretty cool. And it'll look great. See, the thing though that that this makes me want is all of the Ghostbusters in the khaki Ghostbuster Two outfits. Oh, did they not do all them? Like they're not going to do all those. Oh. Uh, they're going to do them in the gray, and then you're going to get Slime Blower Ray and Slime Blower Winston. They have the tan undersuit things, right? They have the tan undersuits underneath there, and I'm tempted to buy extras of those because they'll have the Ghostbusters 2 logo on their mm -hmm. arms and take off the Slime Blower, put proton packs on them, print out name tags, because I really want them all in these khaki outfits yeah. now. Yeah. I, I like the gray outfits a lot, and I'm glad they're doing them, but this makes me want them all in the khakis. Mm -hmm. uh, so... The That's reason cool. I passed on the store was, I know if I bought that one, it's going to be like, okay, now i got to get a Peter. Yeah. Now I want an Egon, an Ray, then a Winston, and then I'm going to go It does. It does get you going. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> once you start, it's tough to stop. Yeah. He comes with a, a trap, which I should have mentioned earlier. And I think all the Ghostbusters 2 figures, they included traps with this time around. Whereas the first time around, only Winston came with a trap. This time around, all of them come with traps, and yeah. they just plug right on the belt. Uh, he comes with a proton stream, you already saw the extra hands. The other thing we should talk about is his diorama piece. If you got it at Toys R Us, it was only 15 bucks, you didn't get a diorama piece. If you buy it at comic shops, it's going to be like 25 bucks, and you get a piece of the firehouse. Uh, which I, we, we may not show this piece for every single figure we do, because I'm going to start building it once I start going. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the door. And you can kind of tell how huge it's going to be. I kind of like that the door came with him, because isn't that the first shot of him in the suit? It's him at the door, then it pans out, kind of? Or... Yeah, the doors open up, and he comes running out. Yeah. And then he's like, boy, this equipment's heavy. <laughs> uh, it also is cool, because in the end sequence, when they're showing the names of the actors, his scene is him walking through the door, and he kind of has this trouble walking through, because there's a door inside of a door. Right. So he, like, opens this door, and then cl opens this door, and then walks around the door, and he doesn't know which way he's going. Uh, so it is really cool that Lewis comes with the door, because he's yeah. got a couple scenes with the door. So, I guess it wraps it up on it. Yep. I would say, I love this line. It's my favorite line currently. 
Uh, I think the value's great. Even if you buy them at comic shops, I mean, they're the same price as Marvel Select figures. Yeah. It's and like, you're not getting build of stuff with Marvel Select figures. They're a little bit taller than Legends, which are $20, and they come with more stuff. Yeah. So, good deal on that. They're great. I mean, and Marvel Legends, I, I like Marvel Legends a lot, but a lot of times it's the same body, mm -hmm. which is the different paint job. Um, these, you're really getting a lot of unique bodies. All four Ghostbusters are different bodies. This Lewis is a different body. Um, some of the repaint stuff's happening where it's they're using the first wave bodies to do the war backs, but they're changing things like taking off those mm -hmm. plugs, different head sculpts for every character, where they could just reuse them, new belts. Um, so, yeah, it's there's a lot of value going on here. And then if you just consider the diorama a bonus, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a crazy bonus. Like We're looking at this... Rooftop yeah, right that's over here. Insane. That's crazy. That that's that was just basically a bonus if you bought all the figures at you know at comic shops, which again they're like twenty five bucks. Yeah. And sometimes you can find them a little cheaper at some comic shops. That's a great value. And a lot of them, like the two ones, just come with a brick wall, which a lot of people can just use to like display in front of figures. Yeah, a lot of people use this diorama for just other things like Masters of the Universe. Yeah, that's kind of cool looking. For yeah, some it's cool for a lot of stuff. Yeah, I feel like we're just ignoring you. You got anything you want to say? We're just jabbering over you. I buy Marvel Legends because I can play with them. Yeah, you can play with them. You could play with these, too. They break easily, though. They don't, really. Not really. I've never had any... Yeah, I've, I've had no issues with any of them. Usually, a lot of times, I'll have a toy where I'll open it up, and I'm like, oh, that joint's stuck. I'll have to stick it in the freezer. I'll have to do this. I'll have to do that. I haven't had any issues with any of the Ghostbuster figures that I can remember, which is pretty great. I mean, the, the I, I agree with you that the, probably the Mattel ones are a little bit more durable when it comes to playtime. They're, I feel like, we've said this before, that the Mattel figures are more of a play with Ghostbusters line, and these more are a display type line, but I still think they're pretty durable. You know? Yeah. But you like Marvel Legends because you like superhero stuff so much, too. Alright, so I give the highest recommendation I can for this line. I love them. Um, but you have to kind of be a Ghostbusters fan to really get into it. If you want to pick and choose figures and you're kind of worried about not finding them at Toys R Us, just buy them from your comic shop. You're supporting a small business. Um... Yeah, you get an extra piece, you have to spend a few more extra bucks. But still, if those Toys R Us ones didn't even exist, you wouldn't be looking at them and going, ah, oh, well, they cost a little more than I thought. Because the Toys R Us ones are crazy value. 15 bucks is yeah. crazy cheap. I hope people keep supporting the line after the Toys R Us ones go away, because they really, we are really getting spoiled with the $15 ones, because it's such a good deal. Yeah, it is. Like, you, you really are. It's, it's unheard of, really, for that, that to happen. To things be that cheap and have that many new parts. So if that goes away, really don't don't take the, don't hold that against the comic shop versions. Mm -hmm. You know that's the twenty five dollars is also a great deal. Either one's a great deal. Because if you get them all, you can build. The you whole can build thing. something really cool. And if you did buy the first wave and didn't get the parts, and now you got to buy the other ones with the parts, which I've seen some reviewers say that like, oh man, I wish I would have bought the part versions. I mean, Sell your ones on eBay yeah. and then buy the parts, buy the part versions. Yeah, and there's gonna be more like. If you miss this one, there will be another build a thing probably later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna keep doing different build a stuff. I mean, you if, only if have, it's a success, yeah, you only have so much room. So I mean, yeah, I think that the, the firehouse will be much easier, much more easily displayed than the rooftop diorama was because it doesn't weird, have as much depth. Yeah, and has weird shapes all over. Like, yeah, corners. it's there. That thing is really you need some space to put that under. Whereas I think the firehouse is more about height and width than it is about depth. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, if you want to hit actionfeatures.net, you can see a gallery. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, that is. If you're watching it on actionfeatures.net, you already see the gallery. Uh, here's another thing we forgot to say in our little opening video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like our videos in general, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to keep track of the videos we do, after you subscribe, hit that little bell button. Because that sends you notifications when we have new stuff up. YouTube doesn't really send out notifications anymore for subscriptions mm -hmm. a lot of times. So the only way to stay notified for new videos Subscribe, bell button. You got it. All right, I think we're going to sign off on this one. You guys ready to sign off? Yep. In case you never watched one of our videos before, that's my son Blaze, that's my son Keaton, and I'm James. All right, cool. I think cool. that's all. I think that's it, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to pick something you or you're more into next time, so you're able to talk more about it. All right, so we're going to sign off on this one. See you guys next See. time.